Jamaica has a long history of successful businesses and entrepreneurs, but many of these companies have been sold to international buyers over the years. This video will focus on five Jamaican companies that were sold to foreign owners, exploring their history, operations, owners, reasons for sale, and the impact of these sales on the Jamaican economy and the business landscape. Interestingly, all five of these companies were sold under the administration of the People's National Party, or the PNP, which raises questions about the role of government in facilitating or hindering foreign investment in Jamaica. Number 1. Air Jamaica a Jamaican airline with a turbulent history. Air Jamaica, the proud national carrier of Jamaica, has been named the world's best airline to the Caribbean nine years in a row at the World Travel Awards. Air Jamaica was the national airline of Jamaica. Established in 1968 as a joint venture between the Jamaican government and Air Canada, the airline grew to become a major player in the Caribbean aviation market, with routes to North America and Europe. However, the airline faced financial difficulties in the late 2000s, leading to a series of government bailouts. In 2011, the Jamaican government sold Air Jamaica to Caribbean Airlines, a Trinidad and Tobago-based airline, in a deal worth a whopping US $1. However, it's worth noting that the deal included the assumption of Air Jamaica's debt, which was reported to be over $1 billion US dollars at the time. So technically, Caribbean Airlines did not purchase Air Jamaica for just US $1, but rather acquired the airline and its debt for that amount. Start and Operations Air Jamaica was established to provide a reliable air transportation service to Jamaica to promote tourism to the island. The airline had a mixed fleet of Boeing and Airbus aircraft and employed over 3,000 people. Despite its initial success, Air Jamaica faced financial difficulties in the late 2000s due to high fuel costs and increased competition from other airlines. The Jamaican government was forced to provide several bailouts to keep the airline afloat, leading to criticism from some quarters. The sale of Air Jamaica was controversial, as many Jamaicans saw it as a loss of national pride and control over a key industry. The airline sale was seen as a necessary step to reduce the government's debt burden and improve the country's finances. However, the sale led to job losses and reduced the air transportation options for Jamaicans. Number 2. Petrojam A Jamaican oil refinery sold to a Venezuelan state-owned company. Petrojam is a Jamaican oil refinery that was established in 1964. The refinery played a crucial role in meeting Jamaica's energy needs and was responsible for importing and refining crude oil for local consumption. In 2006, the Jamaican government sold a 49% stake in Petrojam to Petroleos de Venezuela SA, a Venezuelan state-owned oil company, in a deal worth $55 million. US dollars. Start and Operations Petrojam was established to provide a reliable source of refined petroleum products to Jamaica and reduce the country's dependence on imported oil. The refinery had a capacity of 36,000 barrels per day and employed over 500 people. The sale of 49% stake to PDVSA was seen as a strategic move to strengthen Jamaica's economic ties with Venezuela. The sale of Petrojam was controversial as it was seen as a strategic national asset that should have remained under Jamaican control. Critics argued that the sale was not in the best interest of the country and could lead to a loss of jobs and revenue. In 2019, Petrojam was embroiled in a corruption scandal, which led to the resignation of the company's board and calls for investigation into the sale of the company's shares to PDVSA. Number 3. Ray and Nephew a Jamaican rum brand acquired by a global conglomerate. Ray and Nephew is a Jamaican rum brand that was founded in 1825 by Charles James Ward. The company grew to become a household name in Jamaica, known for its signature white rum and overproof rum. In 2012, Ray and Nephew was sold to Grupo Campari, an Italian beverage conglomerate for US $415 million. Start and Operations 
Ray and nephew was established in Jamaica in a small distillery in 1825 by Charles James Ward. The company grew over time, expanding its product range and distribution network. Ray and nephew was known for its high quality rum and became a symbol of Jamaican culture and heritage. The company also played a significant role in the country's economy, providing employment opportunities and contributing to the national tax base. The sale of Ray and nephew was seen as a loss of Jamaican heritage and a shift in ownership of a key industry from local to international hands. The sale was also seen as a significant financial gain for the Jamaican government, which owned a minority stake in the company. While Grupo Campari committed to retaining the company's Jamaican identity and production, some Jamaicans expressed concern about the impact of the sale on local jobs and the loss of control over a symbol of national pride. Number 4. Carb Cement a Jamaican cement manufacturer sold to a Mexican conglomerate. One of the most respected figures in martial arts. Wow, he packs a powerful punch. So, now this wall is built with carb cement plus, so he might want to be careful here. Well, as you can see, Master Lee is strong, but he's also very smart. Carb cement plus is a winner. It's strong, durable, and affordable. Carb cement, formerly known as the Caribbean Cement Company Limited, is a Jamaican cement manufacturing company that was established in 1947. The company played a significant role in Jamaica's infrastructure development and was responsible for supplying cement for many of the country's major construction projects. In 2016, Carib Cement was sold to CMEX, a Mexican cement conglomerate, in a deal worth over 100 million US dollars. Start and Operations Carib Cement started as a joint venture between the Jamaican government and the British firm Rugby Portland Cement. The company's first plant was located in Kingston, and it later expanded its operations to other parts of the country. Carib Cement was responsible for supplying cement for many of Jamaica's major infrastructure projects, including roadways, bridges, highways, and housing developments. The sale of Carib Cement to CMEX was seen as a loss of national ownership and control over a crucial industry. The sale was also seen as a necessary step to improve the country's financial performance and competitiveness in the global cement market. CIMEX committed to maintaining the company's Jamaican identity and local workforce, but concerns remain about the impact of the sale on local employment and the country's ability to control its infrastructure development. Number 5. Red Stripe, a Jamaican beer company sold to a British conglomerate. The beer in the shorts to the ugly bottle. If ugly people stand next to a red stripe, they look beautiful. You, sir. Yeah? Would you say that you're ugly? Well, I wouldn't say. You are very ugly. Here, hold this red stripe. Okay. Look, you are beautiful. Red stripe. It's beer. Red beer. Red Stripe is a Jamaican beer company that was established in 1928. The company became known for its crisp, refreshing beer and was an iconic symbol of Jamaican culture. In 2015, Red Stripe was sold to Heineken, a British beer conglomerate, for US $152 million. Start and Operations Red Stripe was established in Jamaica as the first locally owned brewery. The company grew over time and expanded its distribution network to other Caribbean countries and the United States. The company became a symbol of Jamaican culture and pride, with its distinctive red and white bottle design and the slogan, Ure Beer. The sale of Red Stripe to Anakin was met with mixed reactions from the Jamaican public. While some saw it as a necessary step to improve the company's financial performance and competitiveness in the global beer market, others viewed it as a loss of national ownership and a control over a key industry. Anakin committed to maintain the company's Jamaican identity though and local workforce, but concerns remain about the impact of the sale on local employment and the country's ability to control its beer industry. The sale of Jamaican companies to international buyers has been a controversial issue in the country's economic history. While some see it as a necessary step to improve financial performance and competitiveness, others view it as a loss of national ownership and control over key industries. The impact of these sales on local employment and national identity remains a subject of debate, and it's up to the Jamaican government and people to determine the best way forward for their country's economic development. If you found this video interesting, or if there's anything I left out, please let me know in the comment section down below. And if you haven't yet subscribed to Elite Jamaica, please consider doing so, as that really does help the channel.